Hi all. Today I'll be presenting our work on cost aware feature elicitation. This is a joint work with Professor Risha Bayer and Professor Sridham Natarajan from University of Texas at Dallas. Coming to the motivation of the work, let's imagine a medical setting where the task is to predict whether a person has a particular disease or not. We have two types of features in such a setting. One is the observed features, which is the demographics, which comes at no cost because they are easily available. And the other set of features are the elicitable features, which comes at a cost, like the MRI images, lab tests, X-ray uh, data, human, the genotype data, etc. cetera. Uh, we have certain assumptions for our problem setup. Uh, so we assume that the training data is fully observed. All the features are observed during training time. Whereas uh, during test time, uh, a test example has just the zero cost features observed. And we want to solicit the elicitable features for such examples. Our work is based on a very simple motivation, medical motivation, like in such a setting, patients with similar demographics would usually require or have similar elicitable features. To further uh, elucidate on that, uh, let's say that there are these different clusters of patients which were, which were formed on the demographics, right? So for example, people with similar age, gender, ethnicity uh, belong to these demographics, uh, belong to these clusters, and if we were able to identify the important elicitable features uh, for each of these clusters, then at prediction time when a partially observed example comes with just the demographic information, all we have to do is basically allocate this particular example to the nearest cluster and then get the elicitable feature subset for that cluster in order to predict the class variable. So that's the intuition for our work. Coming to the problem setup, we have a usual supervised problem with a data set with n instances. There is a cost vector which specifies the feature acquisition cost of every feature. And there are two different feature subsets as we described. One is the observed and other is the elicitable feature subset. Our task is to learn a discriminative model G, which takes into account the feature acquisition cost and balances the right trade-off between this cost and the model performance. It also solicits elicitable features for a partially observed test example. We have uh, certain assumptions. Uh, the first assumption is that the observed feature set comes at zero cost and the elicitable feature subset uh, comes at a cost. And uh, both these feature subsets are observed for the training data, whereas for a test example, only the observed feature subset is there. This is a reasonable assumption because for training data, uh, it's usually reasonable that you know you will get all the features from a patient's medical history or from different other sources. But at test time, uh, identifying the elicitable features are of utmost importance because you know either a patient doesn't want to pay extra for for unnecessary lab tests, or at times the hospitals doesn't have enough resources to. Uh, to pay to to accommodate a patient so hence we think that our assumption is reasonable in this regard these are the some works that are, that has been done so far uh, regarding test time feature elicitation uh, a lot of work has been done on tree based budgeted learning where based on various tree models the important elicitable features are identified uh, then there has been work on adaptive classification where a high cost classifier is learned on all the data and then a low cost classifier which is built on certain important features to approximate this high cost function. Uh, there has also been reinforcement learning approaches to learn the policy of feature acquisition, you know, for every instance which features are important. While these uh, type of work look, look at this problem from, from various angles in machine learning, we come up with a different approach which is based on uh, information theoretic feature selector module and then a usual classifier. 
So this is our framework for cost-aware feature elicitation. First, we have a clustering module, which basically clusters these instances based on the observed feature set, which is the zero cost feature subset. Once these clusters are formed, then we have a feature selector module whose high level task is to identify the elicitable feature subset from important feature subset for each of these clusters from the elicitable features. And once the feature selector identifies that, the model takes just these important features into consideration while optimizing the loss function and updates the parameter accordingly. And at the end, we have a training model built on just the important features of these underlying clusters. Here is the feature selector module that we use for our uh, work. This is an information theoretic feature selector module and has been used in literature. A part of it is called MRMR in literature, which, is, which stands for max relevance mean redundancy. So the first component is the maximum relevance component, which is the mutual information between every feature and the target. And we know that this needs to be maximized. The second component is the mutual information between every feature in the set. And these needs to be minimized because more correlated feature induces redundancy. The third feature is the conditional re redundancy. And it is a mutual information between every feature that is evaluated and this particular class conditional feature variable. And the fourth component is the cost, which kind of manages the trade-off between, you know, how important a feature is and how, how much is its feature acquisition cost. So we aim to maximize this objective function and we use a greedy forward selection technique where we start with an empty subset and at each point evaluate the feature which has the maximum gain and add it to the feature subset and go, go on. So the feature selector optimization function is this so it's basically the feature subset which maximizes this feature selector objective function and once this feature subset for cluster i is identified we use this along with the observed features in the loss function to update the classifier parameter theta moving on to the experimental evaluation the data sets were partitioned into 80 percent and 20 percent test hyperparameters of cafe like the number of clusters were done using five-fold cross-validation. Uh, performance metric that we reported for our experiments were recall F1 score AUC, ROC, AUC, PR. This is because we used some real-world data sets which, had, uh, which are medical data sets and are highly imbalanced, hence the choice of metric. And the underlying classifier was SVM with uh, radial basis function. These are the baselines that we used for evaluation of our approach. OBS is the simple baseline where we build the model on just the zero cost observed features. R&D is where we select random elicitable feature for the entire data and then use it for prediction. And k-best is where we select the k-best features using the feature selector objective function that we already discussed. And then use it for prediction without any underlying cluster uh, consideration. Here are the results. These are the experiments with hard budget on features where we already fixed the number of features that can be acquired for every cluster. And these are the results. And we see that CAFE performs better than the other three baselines on almost all the data sets. Uh, this is another version of CAFE where we put cost, feature acquisition cost on all the features and then evaluated the performance of CAFE against K-Best. And we see that at least for rare disease and Parkinson's disease prediction, CAFE performs consistently better than the baseline K-Best, which does not have any cluster consideration. Uh, that's all. Uh, coming to future work, uh, in this work, we do not learn the parameter of the feature selector module and the classifier together. That's something that we want, wish to do in our future work. We also want to model this problem as a submodular optimization problem and add more robust constraints to the optimization. And also, we want to relax certain assumptions that we have for our problem, like you know, the training data is fully observed, all the features are observed in the training data. 
uh, that's something that we want to relax going forward. Thank you.